Okay, what's going on folks? Mr. Brunswold here. Go ahead and find your notebook and you're going to watch this lesson on electron configurations and then you're going to take notes while you watch the lesson. Um, for your table of contents, this is unit 2. The topic is electron configurations. Today's date is 1026. Central question, what is an electron configuration? So what is an electron configuration? It's basically just a simplified version of an orbital diagram. So if you haven't watched or completed the orbital diagram lesson yet, you should probably do that first. It's another way to model an atom. <clears throat> so we've kind of talked about a few different ways to model atoms at this point. We've, you know, drawn diagrams of atoms. You're going to do some more of that today. We've done our orbital diagrams. You've, uh, uh, you're going to do some more of that today. Um, and you're also going to learn about electron configurations. So it's another way to model an atom, or at least the electronic structure of an atom. Okay, so these are some of our examples from the orbital diagrams. Um, and we're going to translate these orbital diagrams into electron configurations. So here for lithium, we can see that it has two electrons in the 1s orbital. Remember, the s orbitals are like the spherical shaped ones. And it has one electron in the 2s orbital. And so then how do we write that as an electron configuration? Well, we write 1s because it's the 1s orbital and it has one, two electrons in there. So we give it a superscript 2. The 2s orbital only has one electron in there. So we write that one as 2s1. <coughs> Beryllium, very similar. Right, we write then as 1s2, 2s2 because this one has one, two electrons in the 2s orbital. For boron, we're going to need to add a third orbital, the 2p orbital. So we're going to write 1s2, 2s2, and then 2p. And then since there's one electron in there, we'd write it as 2p1. So what would be the electron configuration for carbon? Try to predict it on your own before I show it right here. It's the same thing as boron, but it should have a 2 up here, right, instead of a 1. Nitrogen should have a 3 instead of a 2, because it has 1, 2, 3 electrons. Oxygen should be 2p4. Fluorine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons, so it'll be 2p5. Neon will be 2p6, because there's 6 electrons in there. So what if you don't already know the orbital diagram? Then how do you come up with the electron configuration? Well, let's go through an example. Here's sulfur. And so we're going to kind of start the same way that we did with the orbital diagrams. We're going to look at this chart. In the P block, that's one, two atoms wide. <clears throat> and so for that reason, we're going to write this first one as 1s2. Um, and again, the reason why it's 1s is because this is the first row. So 1 tells you what period you're in. S tells you that it's in the S block. So 1s2. Then your next two elements, lithium and beryllium, those are in the second row, so that's going to be 2s2. Next, we're in our p block, so we're still in the second row, but now we're in the p block, and that can hold 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. So next up is going to be 2p6. <clears throat> Now we're back down here in the third row. We're back in the S block, so we're going to write this as 3S2. Now we're over here in the P block. P block, again, can hold six electrons. We're still in the third row, so this is going to be 3P. And then as we count over to sulfur, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3P4. And that's how you write the orbital diagram for sulfur. You can also write an abbreviated orbital diagram. So let's um, just talk about the orbital diagram for neon. Neon ends at 2p6. So the electron configuration for neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Well, you can see that's just the front part of sulfur here. So the abbreviated way to write the electron configuration for sulfur is just to call all of this neon and then add the valence electrons, so 3s2 and 3p4. <clears throat> oh, 
Let's do a little bit more complicated example next, titanium. We're going to follow it out the same way. We start off in row 1 in the S block, so 1S2. Now we're in row 2 in the S block, so this should be 2S2. Now we're in row 2 in the P block. And the P block, remember, can hold 6 electrons, so up next is 2P6. Now we're going to go to row 3 in the S block, so this is going to be 3S2. Now we're in row 3 in the P block, <clears throat> so 3P6. Now we're in row 4 in the S block, 4S2. And then last up, we're in the D block here for titanium. It's the second one in the D block. But remember, even though we're in row 4, this is not the 4D block. The D block is screwy. They've got different um, different periods, so even though, or different numbers. Um, so even though this is the fourth row, this is the 3D block. <clears throat> Titanium is the second element in the 3D block, and so it becomes 3D2. Um, you can also write an abbreviated version for titanium, and you can do that using argon. So argon ends at, this is the third row, and it's the sixth element in the P block. Um, so you could write it as 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. And so the abbreviated to write, way to write um, the electron configuration for titanium would just be to start with argon and then write 4s2 and 3d2 so 4s2 3d2 and again whenever you're writing the abbreviated you need to start with a noble gas so earlier we started with neon this time we're starting with argon i think uh, when i did the orbital diagrams i showed an example with neon so anytime you're doing the abbreviated you always start with one of these noble gases over here um, and we'll talk more about why that is um, when we get to uh, bonding in our next unit. Okay, um, and so then if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I do want to show one more little thing. This is a little Easter egg for those of you that have been watching my videos. Um, one thing that you can do to find these electron configurations and um, um, uh, orbital diagrams is you can uh, go to the dynamic periodic table. You can click on electrons. Okay, and then if you click on an element, like for example, we just did titanium, it will give you the orbital diagram on the side here. And so you can see that, look, uh, the 1s, the 2s, the 3s, the 4s, uh, the 2p and the 3p are completely filled. And, um, and then the D electrons have one, two in there. So that's kind of a nice little secret. You can also see, oh look, we have the electron configuration, both the abbreviated and the unabbreviated versions down below as well. So just a little Easter egg for those of you that have been watching my videos, a little tip to make this a little bit easier for you, a little reward because I appreciate that you've been watching my videos. Okay, have a good day folks.